Hi, my name is Teresa Sincata, and welcome to set one of my video book critiques. I have chosen The Dinosaurs of Waterhouse Hawkins by Barbara Curley as my feature text. The genre of this book is narrative, realistic, and historical nonfiction. The grade levels for it are second through sixth grade reading levels, and it has won the Caldecott Book Award. This story is about Waterhouse Hawkins, who is an artist that brings dinosaurs to life. The book is split into three sections, London, America, and Home Again. In the first section, it talks about how Waterhouse Hawkins brings these dinosaurs to life. He uses a process that he describes in the book. First, he draws the dinosaurs. Then, he makes small clay models out of them. Then, he makes life-size clay models out of them. Next, he makes some molds for his dinosaurs, then an iron skeleton, and last, he finishes the dinosaurs, dinosaurs using bricks, tiles, and broken stones, all held together with cement, covered with cast and painted. In the second section of the book, titled America, it talks about how water horses' dinosaurs have become so famous word travels from London to America. Water Horse travels to America to build his dinosaurs and bring them to life in New York. However, he runs into some trouble along the way. A very famous politician nicknamed Boss does not like what Waterhouse is doing and does not think that he should be taking these creatures and bringing them to life. So he destroys the work secretly one night. Waterhouse is devastated and doesn't know what to do. He tries to fight for his right to build these dinosaurs, but with no avail. He sadly decides it's time for him to come back home. This brings us to the last section of the book, titled Home Again. This section speaks of how much of an impact Waterhouse's dinosaurs had on the world. The reason I have chosen this book is because I believe it is a perfect book to use for high schoolers, even though it's aimed at second and sixth grade reading levels. Since this book is a historical fiction, I believe that it would be a fun way for students to learn a little bit of history. But also because Waterhouse is an artist, I believe it would be fun to bring into an art or engineering classroom. My first lesson has to do with history. The task is that students have to imagine they know Waterhouse and create a flyer to advertise a, so a showcase for his dinosaurs. First, the students will be assigned groups. Then, using the website S'more, each group will make a flyer. S'more is a free website that students can use to make flyers. It is very easy to use and also very fun to use. Here is a little video of how it works. Each group will be able to make their own flyer and be able to include pictures, text, and other things. They can use, choose a theme and they can move things around to how they want it to look. After this, the groups will each create their own flyer in a way they think is best for advertising this showcase. Students will then present their flyers to the class as a group. I have aimed this lesson to be for ninth graders. Here is a flyer that I made on S'more as an example of what they would be making. Come one, come all, to witness something never seen before. Come to the Crystal Palace to see life-size models of dinosaurs, designed, modeled, and built by Waterhouse Hawkins. This weekend, you do not want to miss this event. I have chosen some photos of the actual dinosaurs in London by the Crystal Palace, which is where he has put them. My next lesson I have aimed for an art or engineering classroom. Their task is using steps similar to the ones Waterhouse used to make his life-size creatures, which I have mentioned before, make a model of your favorite animal. The steps for this model include First, the students will draw the, what they want to create. Then they will create a clay model of what they have drawn. Next, they will create a 3D model online of their animal. And finally, their finished project will be a printout on a 3D printer. The students can create a 3D model online using a CAD software, which is a computer-aided design, such as AutoCAD. Unfortunately, CAD softwares are too extensive for a student to buy on their own, so the school would have to make sure that they purchase this for the students to use. Finally, the students will be able to bring their creations to life with the help of a 3D printer. The other books that I have chosen for my video include Dick Whittingham and His Cat, which 
was written by Marcia Brown. Its genre is historical fiction, and it has won the Caldecott Book Award. Next, April's Kittens by Claire Turley Newberry. This is a realistic fiction, and it also has won the Caldecott Book Award. Next, we have two books written by Robert McCloskey. The genre for One Morning in Maine is a picture book, and the genre for Blueberries for Sal is also a picture book. They have both won the Caldecott Book Awards. Next, I have three different books that I found very interesting. The first one, Lawn Popo. It was written and translated by Ed Young. It is a picture book and also a multicultural book. It has won the Caldecott Book Award. The second is Arrow to the Sun. This book was written by Gerald McDermott. It is a picture book and a multicultural book. This book has also won the Caldecott Book Award. Last, we have Black and White, which was written by David McCauley. Its genre is a picture book, and it also has won the Caldecott Book Award. Thanks for watching. See you at my next video.